He pardoned my transgressions. He sanctified my soul. He honors my confessions. With his stripes I am made whole. Truly wonderful what the Lord has done. Truly wonderful. Truly wonderful. It's truly wonderful what the Lord has done. Glory to his name. He pardoned my transgressions. He sanctified my soul. He honors my confessions. With his blood I am made whole. Oh, it's truly wonderful what the Lord has done. Truly wonderful, truly wonderful, is truly wonderful what the Lord has done. Glory to his name. Oh, yes, it's truly wonderful what the Lord has done. Truly wonderful, truly wonderful, is truly wonderful what the Lord has done. Glory to his name. Well, God bless you. Good morning, Geneva. Good morning, Bishop and Mother Joseph. God bless you, Pastor Morton. Good morning, Sister Frederick. God bless you, Sister Matthews. Good morning, Sister Robinson Jacobs. Good morning, Sister Bedford. Good morning, Sister Margaret. God bless you, Sister Cleckley. Good morning, Mother Morris. God bless you, Bailey. Good morning, my friend. Good morning, Ronza. Good morning, Mother McCall. Good morning, Lady Austin. God bless you, and Bishop. Good morning, Burnett. God bless you. Um, Mother Wilkins, God bless you. Sister Angela, good morning. Kimmy, good morning. Marion, God bless you. Sister Petlock, good morning. Missionary Leah, God bless you. Good morning. Um, Katina, God bless you. Good morning, Margaret. Good morning, Sister McLeod. God bless you. Sister Perry, good morning to you. Continuing praying for you and your family. Good morning, Mother Fears. Good morning, Elder Adams. Good morning, Mother Street. God bless you, Sister Stimson. Good morning, Sister Walker. God bless you, Stacy. Good morning, Crystal. God bless you, Miriam. Good morning, Brenda. Good morning, Yolanda. Good morning, Pam. And thank you again. God bless you for all that you did. Good morning. Lady Holding, God bless you, and Bishop, good morning, Sister Wilson Robinson, good morning, Sarah, God bless you, good morning, Brother Paul, God bless you, good morning, good morning, Sister McWhite, good morning, Sister Green, God bless you, Sylvia, good morning, good morning, Cynthia, God bless you, Sister Wiggins, God bless you, Deacon Briggs, good morning, Mother Davis, God bless you, and Deacon, good morning, Lashana, good morning, Michonne, good morning, Sister Scott, God bless you, Sister Sessions, God bless you, Katrina, good morning, Beverly, good morning, Lydia, God bless you, good morning, good morning, Sheila McCoy, God bless you, God bless Bless you. Good morning, Brother Henderson. God bless you. Good morning, Deacon Willie Davis. God bless you and Mother Barbara. Praise the Lord. Well, praise the Lord and good morning, everybody, and welcome to the morning prayer with Pastor Reginald Davis. And as always, it's an honor, a privilege, and a pleasure to be able to spend a few moments with you with a biblical meditation and in prayer for more things have been wrought by prayer than the world will ever know and we continue to witness and see the manifestation of what God does through prayer I want to testify because um, I have had Refuge Temple in a consecration for about seven weeks from Lent through the beginning of Lent, through Resurrection Sunday, I asked the saints to fast and pray with me. And I thank God for those that did, because I wanted the Lord to do something very special on Resurrection Sunday. And I want to testify because um, so many things happened. Um, one of the uh, members of our church was, um, someone came to her and said, I want to bless your church. And they blessed the church with a considerable amount of money. Um, for the purpose of helping us do something special on Resurrection Sunday. And so with those funds, we were able to get a food truck. We were able to um, share the catering with other people to, to serve and to um, get a tent to put up and break down. And it was minimal work for our, for most of our members um, because they wanted we wanted it so everyone could celebrate and enjoy the day 
and not be bogged down with setting up, cooking, doing da 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 da. But I tell you, the Lord blessed us in a mighty way. And then I wanted the Lord to bless us spiritually, you know, and just to do something wonderful in this in the congregation. We had, and I'll say this, we had the biggest Sunday morning crowd that we've had since the pandemic began. Because you know when the pandemic started, our our church gatherings slowed down considerably, down to nine, down to less than 50%. But Sunday we had um, the most most people that we've had since March of 2020. So I'm thanking God for the souls that came. I'm thanking God we had a prayer line that went to the back of the church of just ministering and praying and God blessing at the altar and praise God for five souls that were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ on yesterday. It was an amazing worship. And then we left the worship and went to a wonderful evening of fellowship, fun. We ran, we played. They, we, we, we were able to bless people um, with cash prizes. It was just amazing. It was just amazing. And I'm thanking God for the answering of prayer because yes, he does indeed answer prayer. And I'm believing God, hallelujah, that this is the springboard for continued revival, continued sustenance of ministry, and that God is going to do, we're going to still operate safely. We're going to still operate in the right way, but I'm just believing God that greater things are going to happen in our midst. As always, if you have a prayer request, please place it into the chat if you're on Facebook or inbox Reginald Davis or inbox Refuge Temple. For those who are on Instagram, add your request to the comments section or direct message Pastor RJD. Pastor RJD. And if you're on um, the conference call and anyone can use the um text line you can text your prayer request to 336-567-5358 that's 336-567-5358 and we will gladly add your request to the prayer list to the prayer book and agree with you that God is going to work um in your life come on and let's go into the word we're still in the seventh chapter of the book of Hebrews Hebrews chapter 7 and I want to read verses 18 and 19. Hebrews chapter 7, verses 18 and 19. The Bible says, For there is verily a disannulling of the commandment going before for the weakness and the unprofitab unprofitableness thereof. For the law made nothing perfect, but the bringing in of a better hope did by the which we draw nigh unto God by the which we draw nigh unto God I want to talk today from the subject law versus hope law versus hope we have continued in this study of, of Hebrews which is the attempt of the writer to dissuade the um, Hebrew, second generation Hebrew believers from going back, from turning back, from giving up, from falling away in their faith, from literally turning their back on Christ and returning to Judaism, um, simply because they were being persecuted. And when you're facing trouble, and when the trouble is severe enough, you do begin to question all of your life's decisions. You know, if you go through enough challenges, you will question your career choices, your you'll question your marital choices, you'll question your family decisions, you'll question your friendships, and yes, you will question whether or not your faith is working. And, and that was the mindset of many of the Hebrew believers. Their parents were saved at Pentecost. Their parents were saved in the days of the early church. And here they are now um, suffering from persecution from the Roman Empire, persecution from um, the other Jews in their communities. And they were really wondering if they had done the right thing. And so with that being said, um, the writer is trying to constantly reiterate the fact that if you're with Jesus, you have made the right decision. 
And so he points out a number of contrasts. We talked at length yesterday about Melchizedek and how that the priesthood of Melchizedek was superior to the Aaronic priesthood because it was based in eternality and not temporal. He continues this comparison contrast in dealing with the law or what he calls the commandment in one text. Now, let me be very clear that the, the law, by definition, came from God. The law was holy. The law was righteous. The law was the intent of God to separate and identify Israel as his people. The only problem with the law was man's inability to keep the law. The only problem with the law was man's inability to follow the law. Because all of us fight with something that we call flesh. Our emotions, our feelings, our dispositions, our attitudes. And when you put flesh with the law, it makes the law weak. When you put flesh with the law, it makes the law weak. And that's any law. That's any law. If you don't believe me, some of us are going to leave this morning and drive to work. And I'm sure somewhere <clears throat> on your drive to work, you're going to see a speed limit sign. Speed limit might be 35 and you go 40. Speed limit might be 55 and you go 60. Speed limit might be 65 and you go 80. And, and, and But the law is there. You see the sign, speed limit, speed limit, all designed to get you to, 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 to respond and to slow down and to drive a little more cautiously. But if you're late for work or if you're in a hurry or if you just like to drive fast, you will violate that law until you see the blue light behind you and then you'll slow down or the blue light in front of you and then you slow down. That in other words, you don't follow the law. I don't follow the law, if I could be honest unless there is a threat of being penalized. And that's the nature of flesh when you mix fate flesh with the law. The same thing applies with the law of God, that you can give man the law, you can teach the law. God gave Israel the law on two tablets of stone that he wrote with his own finger, but yet they continue to violate the law of God. He gave them commandments, he gave them statutes, he made the sacrifice provision, if they failed, but they continued to violate the law of God. Why? Because the flesh does not want to follow law. The flesh does not want to follow rules. The flesh does not want to follow whatever God says. So people do what they do and they continue to do what they do despite the law. And so the, the commandment is disannulled, not by God. The commandment is disannulled, disannulled by the weakness of of man and the weakness of man makes the law weak and so that's why the law by itself can never save anybody all the law can do is identify what is wrong all the law can do is expose us to our sin all the law can do is expose us to our need for Jesus Christ because here are God's guidelines and here I am unable to keep God's guidelines trying my best doing what I'm supposed to do but inwardly I'm caring because, you know, all laws are not out with things. No, maybe I don't kill. Maybe I don't steal. Maybe I don't commit adultery, but I'm very jealous of other people. So I'm committing the sin of covetousness. And so here I am battling with the law and losing the battle because I can't keep it by myself. Trying and trying and trying and trying, but unable to maintain, hallelujah, the guidelines that God has set forth. And that's why, hallelujah, it becomes weak. It becomes becomes unprofitable. You have a bunch of guilty people out there who know better, but aren't able to do better, who know that they should be living, oh God, in a manner that pleases God, but yet failing daily. How many of us have been gripped by that guilt that I've tried over and over and over and over again to do this right, and I keep failing at the ready, keep failing at every turn, keep failing. And so not only am I guilty of the sin, but I'm carrying guilt, I'm carrying regret, I'm carrying remorse in my heart because I'm just not 
able to do this by myself. For the law made nothing perfect. Let me read that again. The law made nothing perfect. Nobody was perfected by keeping the law. Why? Because nobody could keep all of the law. Even the people that walk close to God, even the people that had fellowship and some level of intimacy with God. And the best example I can give you is Moses. Here was Moses chosen by God, pulled from the river. Here was Moses who was the, the prophet, the servant, led them out of Egypt. Here was Moses who led them across the Red, through the Red Sea. Here was Moses who called fire from heaven. Here was Moses who God used in a profound way. But when Moses lost his temper, he was denied access into the promised land because he valued the people over God. So even Moses, even the Lord's servant, missed out on the promised land because he was imperfect even though he had the law. The law did not make anybody perfect, but the bringing in of a better hope did. Oh, hallelujah. Oh my God. What's the better hope? The better hope is Jesus Christ. The better hope is the Lord who died for our sins and who is transforming us to become like him. The washing of the blood, Ishanama, the washing and the renewing of the blood that washes the conscience, that cleans the mind. Oh God, the infilling of the Holy Spirit that empowers the believer to live and to do what God wants them to do. That power, that, that hope, that hope, that hope. I came to share hope with somebody. That it doesn't matter how many times you failed in trying to please God, how many times you failed in trying to do the will of God, how many times you failed in trying to honor and live for God. If you grab hold to that hope that is in Jesus Christ, it will transform your life. And you're not living by the law, but you're living by the faith in Jesus, the faith in the blood, the faith in the efficacy of the power of the blood, the faith in the transformational power of the Holy Spirit, that when you allow the Holy Spirit to become a part of your life, he changes you in such a way that you can now live for God. Oh my God, you can live for God. He died for you, but you can live for God. That better hope by which we draw nigh unto God. The law kept me away. Let me say it again. The law kept me away. When I knew I had sinned, when I knew I had transgressed, I didn't go to God because all that was there for me was judgment. I didn't go for God because all that was there for me was recrimination and retribution, the judgment of God. That's all that was there. So I stayed away from God. But when I understand that I can draw nigh, I can approach because of the blood. The blood has gone in front of me. Oh my God. The blood has gone in front of me and that blood in front of me has paved the way that I can approach God. So when God looks at me. He does not see my sin. When God looks at me, he does not see my mistakes. When God looks at me, he does not see all the things I've done wrong. What he sees is the blood, Ishanama, the atoning grace. What he sees is the mercy. What he sees, oh God, is the kindness and the compassion and the unconditional love that has been made manifest through the precious blood of Jesus Christ. So I can approach, I can draw nigh, I can stand in the presence of the living God because of the blood of Jesus Christ. Oh God, thanks today. I'm grateful. I'm grateful. I'm thankful for the precious blood. I'm thankful for what I know the blood can do in the lives of people. I'm thankful for what I know God is able to manifest. Oh God, there was law and then there's hope. And saints, if I have to choose between law and hope, I'd rather have hope. Hope that tells me that the Lord loves me. Hope that tells me that God is able to bless and strengthen me. Hope that tells me that he has compassion even for my weakness even for my flaws, even for the errors of my ways. God has hope. He provides hope that if I trust him, if I believe in the power that is in the blood, if I believe in the grace that's been provided by the cross, if I believe in the infilling power of the Holy Spirit to regenerate and to change my life, I can live in a manner that pleases God. I can draw nigh.
I can come closer. Oh, Shani Arabasi Atadaye. I can come closer. I don't have to stay away because I'm guilty. I don't have to stay away because I failed. I don't have to stay away because I haven't done everything right. But because of this hope, because of this blood, because of this faith in Jesus Christ, I can come closer. I can draw nigh. Jesus declared, I am the way, the truth, and the light. No man cometh to the Father. But by me, I can come to the Father because I can come through Jesus Christ. He has made the difference. He has given me hope. He has given me life. He has given me the ability to draw nigh to God. I can have fellowship with God day by day, hour by hour. Still not perfect. Still not perfect. But I still have the blood. Still struggle with some things. Still fight with some perceptions. Still wrestle with my flesh. But I've got the power of the blood. Still fail, still make mistakes, but I can come boldly to the throne of grace. Oh God, to find grace and mercy in time of need. Oh God, the saints, those of us who are standing, we're not perfect people. We fail on a regular basis, but we're thanking God for the blood that holds us and sustains us and keeps us. So yes, I'd rather have hope than to have law. I'd rather have hope and as the old songwriter said, my hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. I dare not trust the sweetest frame, but wholly lean on Jesus' name. On Christ, the solid rock I stand. All other ground is sinking sand. There is no hope outside of Christ. There is no hope outside of the blood. There is no hope outside of Calvary. If you're going to have hope, it has to be in that divine power of the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. Saints, I'm grateful today. Oh, God, that I chose hope. I'm grateful today, hallelujah, that I have hope. I'm grateful today for my faith in the power that is in the Lord Jesus Christ. Thank God today I've chosen hope. Thank God today that you've chosen hope and we have it in the Lord Jesus Christ. God bless you, my brothers and sisters. Let's go before the Lord in prayer. My gracious God, I love you. I adore you. I worship and honor you. Lord, for your goodness, your mercy, your grace, your love that you extend to us daily. It's of your mercy that we are not consumed because your compassion fails not. But my God is made new every morning. Great is thy faithfulness. And Lord, you are the faithful God who continues to bless us each day, who continues to favor us at each moment, who gives us life, who gives us hope, who gives us grace and peace. And Lord, we're so thankful. Hey, God, for you. Thanking you, God, for waking us up this morning. And Lord, we were in our right minds and we were able to move and to live. And we were able, my God, to celebrate your grace and your mercy today and prepare ourselves to meet with my brothers and sisters from all over the world. God, I thank you for everybody. I thank you for every soul, every believer, every prayer warrior, every person trying to find their way. I thank you for everybody who joins this prayer today. Thank you for their consistency. Thank you for their faithfulness. Thank you, my God, because you continue to show yourself to be the wonderful God that you are. And Lord, as we pray today, I'm praying, my God, that you would release unexpected favor. I'm praying that your anointing and your presence would flow through the conference call, flow through Instagram, YouTube, Facebook, flow in such a way that lives are changed in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. I'm praying today, oh my God, that you would grant the petitions that we have have before you. So many praying for loved ones, praying for mothers and fathers and spouses and children and grandchildren, believing you, God, for deliverance, for healing, for provision, for salvation, for the opening of doors, for the making of ways. God, do it now in the name of Jesus Christ. Release your favor. Release your favor upon the people now. I know you answer prayer. I know you answer petitions. I know you grant 
grant grace to as many as stand in need, God. So God, do it today, Lord. Lord, remember every name that's on the prayer list, every name that's in the prayer book, every person who's in the chat, everybody that's been sent by messenger or text message. Lord, however you have, oh God, sent that word. We're praying now that you would bless in a mighty way. God, we're praying for Randolph and Latrice and Jacob and Reuben and Caleb. We're praying for Deacon Malcolm today, for Scott, for the Diaz family, for the Lovett family, for the Wright family. We're praying for Justin Edwards this morning. We're praying for the Travis family, for the Williams family, for the Bowman family, for the Hudson family. God, we're praying for Elder Depper. We're praying for Mother Wilson's family. We're praying for the Universal Training Institute, God, and all the students there. We're praying for Antonio Coleman. We're praying for Zeron Shivers. We're praying for Anthony Moore, for Jonathan, for Kevin Moore, for Nicholas. We're praying for Minister Stephanie Perry, for Kenneth Perry. We're praying for Teresa Johnson, for Daphne, oh God, uh, Daphne Perry. We're praying for Winnie Diggs and Jaquise Diggs. We're praying for Jackie Hinton today, for William Sykes. We're praying for the True Vine Apostolic Church and the Mount Sinai Solid Rock Church. We're praying for Gareth Leach today, for Elaine Scott, for Brooke. We're praying for everybody that needs to be saved. My God, for you to save. We're praying for Margaret, for Janet, for Evian. We're praying for Nathan. We're praying for the Golden Family. We're praying for revival to break out in every church, God, to the end that souls are saved and lives are changed. Oh, God, and bodies are healed, my God, and the spirit of renewal comes upon the people of God. We're praying for the Merritt family. God, we're praying for this continued conflict in the Ukraine. My God, protect the refugees. Protect those trying to stay safe. Oh, God, protect, oh, God, oh, God, and bring an end to this unjust war now. Move upon the heart, oh, God, of the people of Russia, oh, God, to stop this senseless killing in the name of Jesus. We're praying for the Hester family, for the Smith family. We're praying for the Cain family. We're praying for the Williams family. God, every name that's been submitted, we're lifting up in prayer. And God, we're believing you even for unspoken requests. People that have needs, God, that we can't share nor articulate. But God, we're praying today that you would touch and deliver. We're praying for Stacy and Trayvon today. God, give them mighty deliverance. We're praying, oh God, for, oh God, Tommy and Tamara in the name of Jesus Christ. We're praying today, oh God, for every heart and mind, every soul, everywhere, God, that needs a touch of your hand. God, we're praying for the sick today, everywhere. We're praying for Queenie this morning. We're praying for Norman Davis. We're praying for Judy Cleckley. We're praying for Susan Samuels, for Yolanda and family. We're lifting up missionary Joyce Domingo today. We're praying for Mother Barbara Davis, God. We're praying for Diana Williams, for Elaine Nicholson, for Bessie, for Usa. We're praying, oh God, for Jimmy Haynes and Marilyn Haynes. We're praying for Sydney. We're praying for Miracle Destiny, God. Everybody that needs a healing touch, we lift up before you, God, because we know, oh my God, that by your stripes, my God, we are healed. God, I'm praying today, my God, for Bishop Alfonso Brooks, for Mother Shirley Clark, for Mother Evangeline Jenkins, for Lady Andrea Maxwell. My God, that your healing virtue, my God, might be manifested. Lord, I'm praying, hallelujah, today. Oh God, for Pastor Carr, strengthen him now. I'm praying for Brother Wiggins. I'm praying, oh God, for Brother and Mother Sherrod. God, I'm praying today, my God, I'm praying today for Deacon and Mother Garland. Everybody that's sick, Lord, that you would touch and heal as only you can. God, I'm praying for Elder Smith. I'm praying for Elder Tyson today. Lord, I'm praying for everybody that needs healing in their body. God, deliver them in the name of Jesus Christ. Remember Mother Foster. Remember my God, Henry J and Brother Cliff. Let your healing virtue flow. My God, remember Mother Tanaj, Mother Holman, Missionary Simmons. Lord, touch and heal and raise them up now in the mighty name of Jesus. God, I'm thanking you, oh God, for the power of prayer and I'm praying today, God, for Cynthia, Catherine, and Duchess. Lord, continue your healing process. Lord, we're praying for healing today. My God, for Marlette, for Tony. Oh, God, hallelujah. For Maurice today, for Chris, Lord. Let your blood prevail. Let your healing virtue flow and touch and deliver now in the mighty name of Jesus. God, we know you're a healer. So walk into every hospital, cancer ward, COVID ward, ICU unit. Oh, God, dialysis unit. Oh, God, and bring healing. Walk into every nursing home 
home, every rehab center. Lord, walk into hospice today, God, because we know that you can turn things around. You are the bomb in Gilead. You are the great physician, and there is nothing, my God, too hard for you. Lord, I'm praying today for grieving people everywhere that you would touch and strengthen, God. Remember Linda. Remember, oh God, those, oh God, families of victims of violence. God, remember Lisa. Remember the Harrison family, the Shepherd family, the Carpenter family. Remember Mrs. O'Ray. Remember Jennifer Sims today. Remember, oh God, Freddie Maxwell today. Remember Karen Belton and her family. God, everybody that's grieving everywhere. God, touch and comfort them. Remember the Bynums, the Taylors, the Lloyds, the Carters, and the Giles family. God, remember, my God, the Dockeries. Remember the White family. Remember the Ransom family. God, because we know that you're a healer. Lord, send your healing virtue. My Shandolobo Siatanaye. Send your healing virtue upon these souls now in the mighty name of Jesus. God, remember Anita and the Brian Hopkins family. Remember Margie and the McLean Melvin family. God, remember my God Brenda and the Alan McNeely family. God, give them comfort. Give them grace in the name of Jesus. Remember my God, the Alan Williams family and strengthen Trell and Ryan. Remember, oh God, the Clark family and help Tommy and Michelle. Remember grieving people everywhere. God, remember the Meadows family. Remember the Perkins family. God, strengthen as only you can in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ. We pray, my God, for the Mays, the Dunlaps, the Purdies, the Sneeds. We pray for the Washington Fields family, the Winninghams, the Middletons, the Taylors. Oh my God, the Bankses, everybody that's grieving a loss. God, help them now in the name of Jesus. Remember the Jackson family today. My God, in the Refuge Church of Talladega. Remember the Thomas family today and the True Light Church of San Diego. God, give grace, give comfort, give peace today. Oh God, remember, my God, the Zapata family, the Felix family. Remember, oh God, the Briggs family. God, remember the Arthurs, the Gleans. Remember, my God, the Mannix, the Boudrams. Remember the Phillips family. God, every grieving family everywhere. God, comfort and help now. Every grieving widow, every grieving widower, every grieving child, every grieving parent. My God, give grace and give help. Oh God, where it's needed now in the name of Jesus Christ. God, remember the body of Christ. Remember, oh God, every apostle, prophet, evangelist, pastor, and teacher. Remember every bishop and elder. Remember every first lady, every pastor's child. God, remember every mother and missionary, every minister and deacon. Oh God, remember the young people, oh God, in the church. Oh God, remember the people of God everywhere, the musicians, the singers, the psalmists, all of the people. God, help them now in the name of Jesus. We're praying for grace today for the church, that we might walk in hope, that we might walk in faith, that we might walk in the love that you've provided for us, God. We know the law can't keep us, but you can keep us. The law can't save us, but you can save us. The law can't deliver us, but you can deliver us, God. And we look to you, God, for the grace of strength and power to live and to walk in your word. My God, remember first responders, essential workers everywhere. Remember, my God, oh God, students and school employees everywhere. God, remember the people, oh God, that help other people in hospitals, clinics, oh God, orderlies, oh God, CNAs. God, cover them, protect them. People that work in offices and banks, God, Lord, protect them and keep them. Oh God, as these numbers go up and down, we're praying for your grace today to be upon the people. We're praying for your protection, God, to be upon those, to keep us covered in your precious blood, to sustain us and guide us in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Oh God, to heal those who are suffering from long-term effects. God, help them today. Help them to recover completely, Lord, in the name of Jesus. And God, heal this land because there's more than sickness, oh God, that's affecting us. There's more than disease and, oh God, injuries that's affecting us. Lord, there's so much sin. Lord God, heal the land from sin. Heal the land from hatred. Heal the land from violence. Heal the land, oh God, from degradation. Heal the land from perversion. Heal the land, God. Heal the land, God, in the name of Jesus. Oh God, from racism, sexism, all forms of injustice. And God, as you do it, we give your name the glory. Protect us and keep us today. Cover us in your precious blood. Oh God, bless our going out and our coming in and make our day productive. And we will give your name the glory, the honor, and all the praise. In Jesus' name, amen, amen, amen. Everybody on this line, come on and give God the glory 
everybody on this line. Come on and give God the glory because he is worthy. He is worthy. He is worthy. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, God. Hallelujah. Oh, my God. Hallelujah. 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 Oh, God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Here's my declaration for today. Hope in Christ has brought me closer to him. Hope in Christ has brought me closer to him. Hallelujah. Hope, hope, not the law. Law couldn't save me. The law couldn't deliver me. But when I began to believe God, when I believed in the power that is in the blood of Jesus, when I believed in the grace that God provides for me, hallelujah, it brought me closer to God. It brought me closer. It brought me nigh. When, when the law separated me, hallelujah, the blood brought me closer. The bl blood brought me closer to him so that I'm able to have fellowship. I'm saved. I'm delivered. I'm free all by the precious blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. All of this, praise our God by the blood. I've been brought closer to him by the precious blood of Jesus Christ. I have been brought closer. He has strengthened me. He has helped me. He has delivered me and he has brought me closer. Closer, hallelujah, by faith, by faith, I've been drawn closer to him. Hallelujah. Hope in Christ has brought me closer to him. Hallelujah. God bless you today. Thank you so very much for being with me this morning. I'm trusting that this biblical meditation and prayer has blessed you and that your Monday is off to a wonderful start. I want to thank everybody for being a part of this morning prayer each day. God bless you. Heaven smile upon you and you can stay connected to Refuge Temple all day. This prayer service is available on Facebook, on Instagram, on YouTube, and you can also access us each morning by conference call and thank God for for those that come into the conference call. And I'm praying that you will share that number with others. I'm praying that you will share this prayer service with others so that they can be encouraged and blessed as well. You can also stay connected through our podcast, Google Podcasts, Apple Podcasts, SoundCloud, and Spotify. And all of this is available 24 hours a day, seven days a week. I want you, if you have a chance, to go back and watch the worship on yesterday. It's on YouTube and on Facebook. And I know God's going to bless you. The sermon was simply... Why should I die when Jesus Christ lives? Why should I die when Jesus Christ lives? And you can access that service once again on Facebook or on Hallelujah YouTube and, and share it once again if it blesses somebody. I want to thank every person that sees, sows, and shares with this ministry. God bless you for your giving. God bless you for your sacrifice. Many of you joined us in our Resurrection Sunday gift. And if you still want to do that, you can do that. And you can certainly be a blessing to the ministry because your gifts help us to do the things that we need to to do. You can mail a gift to Refuge Temple Church, P.O. Box 3552, Burlington, North Carolina, 27215. That's P.O. Box 3552, Burlington, North Carolina, 27215. If you want to give online, our website is Refuge Temple, N is in North, C is in Carolina.com, Refuge Temple, NC.com, and make your gift there. If you have the Givelify app, you can give through Givelify. Just type in Refuge Temple Burlington, and you'll see the picture of the church to make your gift. Or if if you have cash app our cash app is dollar sign the number one refuge dollar sign one refuge and you can make your gift there but thank you for your giving but thank you most of all my brothers and sisters for meeting us in prayer god is moving hallelujah because we are praying so i want to encourage everybody to keep praying don't stop praying and please as you pray pray for me pray for lady davis pray for our children pray for my dad pray for my sisters pray for hallelujah my in-laws my nieces my nephews our entire family just lift us up in prayer pray for refuge temple that god would continue to bless us because i'm excited about what god is doing at this moment and please keep praying one for another and for every church that's connected hallelujah in this great fellowship to all of our friends and prayer partners who are in the henderson area if you're in henderson north carolina on friday night at 7 30 i'm going to minister at 
the greater ransom way of the cross temple that is led by my precious brother, Bishop Michael Austin and Lady Connie Austin. They're hosting the North Carolina Diocese Convention for the Way of the Cross Church International. And you can join me on Friday night. I'm going to minister at 730 on Friday night. Meet us there. And I know God has a blessing for each of you. Hallelujah. Well, look, God bless you today. The grace and peace of God be with you. Until next time, this is Pastor Davis. Shalom, shalom.